Welcome back. It's time to dive into the national dailies, looking at the headlines on the front pages of those newspapers. I'm glad to say we have joining us live uh, to do justice to the headlines this morning. Um, Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, uh, Jide Johnson, good morning to you and thanks for joining us. Hello, are you there, Jide Johnson? Okay, all right, we'll get back to Jilly Johnson as quickly as possible. Let's uh, get things going with a look at the stories from the front page of uh, the leadership on Friday. A very interesting and colorful front page um, with these headlines coming from the leadership on Friday. APC plunges deeper into crisis as factional groups reject new state Excos. Yesterday, um, we were told there was a, a heightened police presence around Buhari House. Buhari House is the uh, headquarters national sectariat of the All Progressives Congress right there in Abuja. And with this headline coming this morning on the front page of the um, national, of the leadership on Friday, APC uh, plunges deeper into crisis as factional groups reject new state excos. Um, the heightened police or security presence was because uh, the National Ketka Committee of the APC was swearing in the state chairman and excos of uh, uh, the APC. It has the following writers, excos inaugurated without oath of office. That's uh, quite surprising. Uh, Aregbe Shola's campaign office attacked. It's an exercise in futility, Magnus Abe's group. We won't recognize Kana Zuru leadership, says Aliero supporters. We're still consulting Lai Mohammed's loyalists and Benue Niger faction's head for court. Of course, after um, the state congresses uh, of the APC earlier, that's last year, um, quite a number, of, a number of states came out with parallel ex-executives, and this is a problem uh, the party is having. So the front page of the leadership newspaper this morning, at the top, uh, Nigeria losing major investors to escalating oil theft. Nigeria losing major investors to escalating oil theft. And one of the things uh, someone commented online um, when the video of that um, uh, exploded floating um, uh, air vessel uh, emanated online was like, oh, we're having a reduced um, oil uh, a production in Nigeria it can meet our OPEC targets. We hope that uh, tomorrow the price of petrol won't be 600 naira, and people began to laugh. Anyway, another one. Fresh Sukuk Fund raises federal government's capital releases to 3.65 trillion naira. Uh, you can read more to understand what that means. Uh, Zulum reiterates call for mercenaries to fight terrorists. So is it, does he want to see the Wagner group from, uh, from Russia and Nigeria? Three die, 12 missing as oil vessel explodes in Delta. So that's an update on that story from the leadership newspaper. Really, really unfortunate and really sad. Federal government nabs 45 of 96 Boko Haram and Aswap Iswap financiers, says insurgents have links with 123 companies. Quite uh, interesting. And it's a, an interesting picture at the bottom of the... Uh, uh, the front page, a picture of a uh, transportation minister, uh, right honorable Rotimia Mechi, uh, in a turban. It seems that um, something interesting is happening today. Let's move on to the next newspaper. And this is a nation newspaper with a leading headline. Buhari rebuffs lobby to shift APC convention date. Yesterday, the papers told us that they had fixed February 26th. And they were told that they had communicated that date uh, to INEC, or they were about to communicate it to INEC. Um, now the president, we're told, is rebuffing lobbying, uh, willing to shift the APC or seeking to shift the APC convention date. The right after that story, no venue in party's notification letter to INEC state chairman inaugurated. At the top, Ladoja joins high chiefs to endorse Balogun as Olu Badon. Hijab Rao resurfaces in Kwara, one feared killed. In violence. This is totally uncalled for. Um, really sad. Oshun APC governorship primary holds February 19, and uh, Nigeria rejects coup as means to change government. Staying with the nation newspaper, Salami, technology key to speedy justice delivery, and three policemen shot dead. Uh, details within the pages of that paper. Ohanese, Igbo, not interested in leaving Nigeria. Ipex body raises panel on 2,000 
and 23 president. And at the bottom of the front page, uh, gunmen kill Katsina Monak for others, and UK and Nigeria unite on security. Those are stories coming on the front page of um, uh, the Nation newspaper. Let's go straight to the Daily Independent on Friday with these headlines. ISWAP fast gaining ground, recurring or recruiting massively, Zulu, that's the governor of Borno State. Uh, the following writers warns Boko Haram would be a child's play if ISWAP grows, as federal government to reconsider hiring mercenaries to fight insurgents. Federal government uncovers 96 financiers of Boko Haram and ISWAP. And PDP tasks federal government to publish names of terrorism sponsors. Details on page six of the Daily Independent. At the top of the front page, federal government revises birth control policy to slow population growth, decries high fertility rate among Nigerians. Casualties feared after oil vessel explosion near Wari. 2023 presidency as the kicker. Crisis as Sinobu's swagger, TSG clash over um, harmonization. These are groups that were set up to support his presidential campaign. The TSG is uh, headed by, I think, uh, former representative Abdul Mumun Jibrin. It's called the Tinubu uh, Support Group. Swaga is another one. We also have, um, I think, the BAT, um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu Group or Support Group. Uh, several ones of them coming up. All right. 2.4 billion Naira fraud charges. Okorocha asks Buhari to stop EFCC from harassing him. Bandits attack at Sina community, kill village head and five others. Squara government shuts down school over hijab crisis and gunmen attack a regular Sholas campaign office in Oshobo. All right, let's move straight to the Punch newspaper. Quite interesting stories coming on the front page of the Punch. The lead story, PDP CSO's lampoon federal government as NFIU uncovers 96 terrorism financiers. With the following riders to 123 firms, 33 bureau de change operators linked to terrorists, federal government alleges. Terror financiers supporters will be revealed in court, says AGF office. With transparency's verdict, Buhari can't boast of fighting graft PDP. More headlines from The Punch. Workers' fate unknown as explosion rocks Delta oil platform. Kanu Sakoto absent as APC inaugurates state chairman amidst heavy security. Ohaneze inaugurates lobby panel, restates Igbo presidency's benefits. And NIN SIM linkage, security agencies get Buhari's nod to access subscribers' details. How safe is that? At the bottom of that front page, Kwara Baptist School shut as fresh crisis erupts over hijab. Tension as hoodlums attack Arabe Shola faction, faction's sectorate, suspect, suspects arrested. Police smash legacy bad on highway, kidnap syndicates, gang members flee. And a court meets Buhari alleges harassment by EFCC, uh, politically motivated. Those are stories coming on the front page of The Punch. All right, time to move over to our guest and, of course, to bring in Gide Johnson, a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Mr. Johnson, can you hear me now? Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. Fant Friday. Fantastic. Um, I'm sure this one must have um, elicited a, a little laugh from you or um, interest from you when you read it or heard about it. And the federal government uncovering um, 96 terrorism financiers, uh, 123 firms associated with terrorism, and 33 forex bureaus, or bureau exchange operators, linked to terrorism. Um, are you impressed? Well, um, it came up with different types of policies to regulate cash flow and outflow out of our country. It came up with um, the DVN. We came up with the single treasury account. These were all policies that were put in place to, ens to ensure that all money coming into Nigeria and going out of Nigeria can be tracked. So it's nothing new or something shocking to me. As far as I'm concerned, it's even commonly that we should have been able to nip this in the board because um, if the central bank, the banks, 
have all our details with the BVN and the rest of all the policies they put in place, it shouldn't be difficult for us to fight this terrorism because it is this large fund that they use to, to, to sustain to sustain their campaign. So well, and let's see what comes out of it. Let's see that uh, if government should be thorough and these people should be prosecuted and they should be identified and they not only be identified, they, they should be shamified so that Nigerians know who they are and then much light should be thrown into it and kind of energy that we put in in, in arresting in Amdeka, in arresting, in, in apprehending Sunday Igbo in, in, in the Republic of Benin, we should put it in place for this for this category of people because these are people that has made Nigeria ungovernable and has made Nigeria not peaceful over over the last over the last over the last few years. And he talks about the need for us to look at how the blue change um subsector of our financial um, industry is is, 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 is is being operated. I have said it over time. It's only in Nigeria that you see people selling money on the street. I've never seen anywhere in the world uh, whereby you have alternative, you have a, um, what do they call this market? You have, a, you have a parallel market apart from central bank whereby there will be people selling selling, selling foreign currency. Whereby, whereas it should be the bank, you should be able to get it through the bank, not that not private individuals having been the change left, right, and center. And it's one of the reasons why the value of, if I'm, if I'm involved in trading, in trading of currency, and I know it pays me more to have dollars so that I can get more Naira to myself. I won't pray for the value of Naira to, to appreciate. I always pray for the value of Naira to, to appreciate. So as far as I'm concerned, that aspect we need to look into. And for the five out of, out of 96, I think we could do more and we should do much more better. These people should be prosecuted they should be identified, and they should be shamified. Interesting use the word shamified, uh, um, shamified, uh, J.D. Johnson, because this isn't the first time um, we're hearing the federal government coming out to say that we know we have terror, terror, terror financiers and sponsors. We know who they are. And um, the last time, it was the Honorable, um, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Aboka Malami, SEN, um, saying that we know who the terrorists are or who the sponsors of terror are. Terror are. Um, he's still saying something on this one. Um, the punch has, has a writer saying terror financiers and supporters will be revealed in court. So um, that shamify you want to see. Uh, Malami is telling you that wait till they go to court. Then they will name or reveal them. Well, well um, so it's important for them to gather their evidence. Um, very well, and um, so that the process is not corrupted. I agree with him until the case is filed at the court. We don't have any right to know who has been arrested, so that we have a watertight prosecution, so that there are no loopholes. And these people should not be given opportunity of repentance. You know, one of the things we have had in fighting terrorism in Nigeria is that after they are apprehended, after we apprehend um, these criminal elements, non state actors um, that have Arrogated the power of violence to themselves is that once we arrest them and they will, they, they will now say oh, they have confessed, they are repentant, and then we we'll put white white rope on them and we we'll give them slippers and we we'll gather them under the canopy. And government, we, we, we do program, we take photo ops with them and we we'll release them back in this, into, into the society. So, as far as I'm concerned, anyone that is caught engaging in one act of terrorism or the other should not be given an opportunity to repent. The dead can come back to life and accept is the repentance of of a terrorist. So that's that's my take. Let's wait for let them do a watertight investigation, so that we have a thorough prosecution and this people can be actually prosecuted without any providing them with legal opportunities to be exploited, the loopholes to be exploited for them to 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 not be condemned to mm. for for commit for committing heinous crime against humanity and against the nation. Nigeria. Yesterday, Governor Zulum of Borno State uh, was reported as saying that um, those repentant Boko Haram members had truly repented, that they truly changed, you know, that his experience with them in the whole, you know, uh, reformation or repentance program, if you want to call it that, um, that they, he, he can confirm that they have truly changed. So isn't this, isn't this lives, a positive, you know? He lives, he lives with them. He lives with them. In, in, in houses, it, it stays in their heart. I've asked my student to come up with, with how we could measure what would be the, what would, what 
what index is we measure to use to measure um, to measure repentance? Can it can it be measured? What scientific method are we going to use? Whether we are going to use qualitative or quantitative measure to measure what repentance is? And I situate that with the statement the, the same governor said with respect to ISWAP growth and how ISWAP is massively recruiting and how we need to use machinery to fight ISWAP. So if Boko Haram are repenting, what is providing the leverage and the levers for the growth of ISWAP in, 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 in Nigeria? So I don't know. You see these people, they are master of double speak. They think that we are intelligent or we are, we are unintelligent and we are stupid. If you say these people truly repent, they are they truly repented, how come you are the same set of you are the same person saying that Israel is gaining ground and there's a need for us to use mercenary before that? It's one of the major headlines in the in the in the newspaper. Yes, so, so you can go ahead and talk about it, and yes. The, and the threat that Israel posed to Nigeria. So if you are Israel is posing threat to Nigeria, then how come the repentant Boko Haram has not been able to give the military and the security agencies required intelligence to nip Boko Haram in the board. Because if these people have been part and parcel of Boko Haram and they have actually repented, they should be able to provide us with the needed intelligence that is required to fight and win this guerrilla warfare. Modern day warfare are not one using cannons, using, using, uh, you know, the way Nigeria celebrated uh, Tukano and the rest of all those um, fighter jets that we've got. The way we are warfare that way, this modern day of intelligence, the need, need intelligence. These are people that have no fixed location. They, they, are, they are mobile, they are mobile, they are mobile, they are mobile forces. So you need to understand the terrain, you need to understand their thinking. And how do you understand their thinking if you do not infiltrate their camp? And if some of them have repented as claimed, then you should be able to nip them in the bud. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the problem of Israel being a threat to Nigeria. Uh, uh, thank you, Julie Johnson. Uh, uh, Baba Dana Zulum is, is, is a hands-on governor. He's a professor and all that. And um, don't you think this, this call by the governor of Borno State is something that is, should be appreciated and is something that is timely and should be heeded by the federal government? And what's your, not your, own, your own opinion of this idea of Zulum to engage mercenaries? Maybe he wants to see the likes of the Wagner uh, group or maybe Blackwater from the United States of America um, in Nigeria. Do you think this idea to engage mercenaries, uh, foreign private armies or, or, or groups, you know, m military groups should be um, considered by the federal government? I, I, I'm see, no, I'm not verified. I've been trying to see some some clips of of um, of some foreign mercenaries that were used to fight the to fight insurgents. In the in the in the north in the northwest Nigeria, whereby we engage mercenaries from other nations, and then um, after this administration came on board, they were disengaged. They were disengaged allegedly. I don't have all the facts, but allegedly they were disengaged. However, you must understand that in fighting war as well, um, nations make use of mercenaries. Make use of mercenaries. These are these 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 are born trained. Um, guerrilla fighters. They understand um, the 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 what they fight for. They they fight for they fight they fight mm, not for for anything but for for their own interest. And once you are able to meet their interest, you need to you need to have them on, on, on your side in order for you to win the war. We have said that our conventional and have they make an inroad? Have we make have we made inroad? Have we achieved greater success using our conventional army alone? And I think that for us to fight this war. We need to use a multifaceted approach, use mercenaries, use the printed book around, use the locals, and so that we use a full prong multifaceted attack dealing with this particular problem. All right, interesting, interesting. So, so um, you're saying you'd like to see something? It's not a bad idea if we can bring in external help uh, for Nigeria yes, in yes, these times. Yes. All right, all right. Yes, of course. Okay, let let let's move on to Kwara State and an ugly. You know, incident has read his head again. It's been there in the past, you know, even in neighboring Oshun State, the issue of um, uh, students of the Islamic faith being allowed to use the hijab in school. Now, this is a Baptist high school somewhere in Oshun State, um, in Kwara State, sorry. Kwara uh, State. Yes, yeah, sending back well, some um, Muslim students. And it, it erupted into a violent clash, and we hear one person was, was killed. 
you see, don't 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 worry, this thing will be on the increase. Election is around the corner. And you know religion is a key component part of 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 of, of, of building sentiments of 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 building sentiment of assuaging the feelings of and so since the election is around the corner, you will see more of this in Kwara State, you see more of this in Ocean State. The question we ask is um why would children go on the rampage to protest that um, the school should allow their children to wear a job or not wear a job? You, you send the schools to every school has its own code of conduct. As own, as own, it's like it's like um, if there's an Islamic school and someone is saying that you know what, we want artists to wear trousers, want them to wear trousers to your school. I think we should have respect for one another. Now, if you go to a particular school, you should respect their values, not as much as you want to uphold your own value. If you are not, if that value does not conform to your own value, you have to resort to violence or violent protest to drive home your point. You can withdraw your kids and take your kids to other school. That's not the only school in that area. But since everything has become politics, and now we are in the era of politics. So, and then you know, if there is, if, if there is one um, course that studied human behavior that has to do with human interaction and power play. It's political science. So if you understand political science, you understand that this dynamics that is going on is the science of politics for 2023. So as we the feelings of people. So I, I, I think that if the state officials are, 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 are fair and they are not biased and they are neutral in this matter, we don't have this type of problem. Anyone that then it is in violent protest, and there are there are laws to deal with that. There are better ways to drive home your point other than resorting to violence and destroying lives and property. All right, interesting, interesting. So uh, you are basically saying that the government of Okara uh, State should allow um, the Baptist High School or any other school that feels it doesn't want uh, its students using the hijab to go ahead. Um, and, is, is that, and that's the but, basic approach. The but, but so, some some will argue that that well, that is an attack you, on religious you, freedom in Nigeria, which the constitution no, guarantees freedom of worship. Say, let me tell you, if you say if you say Nigeria is a secular state, Nigeria is not a religious state, would they allow traditional people to come with shaki? You know what is called shaki? <laughs> or would they allow traditional people to put cowries on their head and cowries on their head and come to this school? Freedom Basically, of worship. Freedom of worship. Yeah, but this is not worship center. This is a school. This is not a worship center. This is a school. There are schools. I'm a Christian, but there are some religious universities in Nigeria that I can never send my children to. I will never, because Why? my value does not conform with their value. I can't send my son to go to a school. In the 21st century, where they will not allow him to have access to his mobile devices. I can't. I can't send my son to a school that where they will not allow him to access the internet in the 21st century. And there are Christian universities in Nigeria that do not allow such. And as a Christian, I can't even send my son there. I know that they are value. I know that's their standard. That's the way they want to operate. I can't. I can't send my son there. I can't even walk there. If I'm ready to walk there, if I'm ready to send my son there, that means that my son must conform okay. to the rules and regulation that governs the operation of that of, of, of that of that. Now, for, I don't, don't have a freedom. Can I go on? Can I now, Nigerian breweries? Can Nigerian breweries take their product to Kano? Will you not be as interested by the Isba police? All Isn't right. that the economic right? Okay. So let, we should respect each other. We let, should respect each other. Let, let, let's move on, Jilly Johnson. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting thoughts you have. Um, Rocha Zokorocha, uh, some days ago, uh, you know, um, informed Nigerians officially uh, of his intention to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And before he could even sit down to enjoy his dinner, and that day, the EFCC had already filed charges bordering on some two, missing 2.9 2 billion naira against uh, Rocha Zokorocha. Um, the latest we're hearing from the front page still of the Punch newspaper is that uh, uh, he has met President Buhari uh, and is alleg alleging harassment by the EFCC. 
uh, and that this harassment is politically motivated. So he's going to meet the president regarding the charges pressed against him or filed against him by the EFCC. That's on the front page of the Punch newspaper. He was harassed in, 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 in tipping his hand in Chukukija. If he had no case to answer, <laughs> he should go to the... If he, if he has no case to answer, he should appear before the court. The court is there to clear his name. Why should he be afraid? He that goes to equity must go with... If his hands are clean, why does he need to go and see the president? He does not need to see the president. If he thinks that the issue is politically motivated, let him take the case to the court. Once the case gets to the court, it's no longer in the hands of yes. It's not in the hands of the judge. And the judge will rule over that matter. And whatever the whatever judgment that is passed should will be fair enough to see whether it's politically motivated or not politically motivated. Anytime they steal money, they don't remember that they are doing politics. But when they are coming for them to account for um, for infractions, for abuse of office and privileges, they, they start screaming it's politically is politically motivated. If you don't want political politically motivated um, uh, harassment from from prosecuting agencies of government, then don't be politically motivated to abuse your office and the privileges that you have been given. So as long as I'm concerned, it's black and dash. And if the president should entertain him, well, the president is not sending the right signal to, to, the, to the security agencies and the security bodies in doing their, in doing their job. As long as I'm concerned, he's just crying. It's crime blue mother is playing your street. But, but I mean, Julia Johnson, so, some yeah. people have pointed out, you know, that uh, um, we have other personalities, let's say within the political sphere, um, who have had cases that need to be looked into, petitions that have been sent to the EFCC uh, regarding them. I won't go into the names now. And um, nothing has been done about these persons. Nothing has been filed before the courts. And Rochas' case, or this is whole fresh one now, nothing was said until he said, I want to be president. And then he did his own razzmatazz and did the ceremony, which has been live on national TV. And then that same day, that same day, they went to, to court, uh, you know, took him to court. Now so let's, let's, let's put it in perspective. That's why some of us have argued that the office of the attorney general should be devoid of politics. It should be devoid of politics. The attorney general should be separated from the Minister of Justice. Are you, are you with me? Um, it is this mixed messaging and this um, double sided approach that EFCC has adopted that gives people the opportunity to criticize them of showing favoritism and of, 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 of being politically motivated in, a, in, in prosecuting their cases. Uh, I, uh, and if you have one, two, three, four, five examples, it becomes a pattern. It is no longer a mistake because you have cases of people that have petitions against them, that EFCC has not moved against them. We have those that the judiciary has thrown, has thrown away out of technicalities. My take on this is very simple. Nigerians are always interested in who becomes a president. We should be interested in who are appointed into judicial positions, who become the chief justice of the federation, who goes into the Supreme Court, who goes into the appeal court. We should be interested. The media should throw spotlight we should know the antecedent, and we should know what um, what what is their judicial philosophy. Because there are three arms of government: the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. Unfortunately, we throw too much attention to the executive, forgetting that there are two other critical institutions that are critical to the sustenance of democracy, of having democratic society. That's the judiciary and the legislature. I hope moving forward, we'll be interested in what happens in these two other organs. Not just only voting for the governor, but who represent me in the House of Rep? Who represents me in the Senate? Who represents me in the House of in the House of Assembly? And who are those that are appointed into judicial into judicial positions? What has been their track record since they joined the judiciary since they joined the judiciary? So I think that's the way we'll be able to nip this issue of a politically motivated prosecution or not. Okay, uh, uh, but what, what, what does this say um, to you, you know, when you, you, you see that uh, um, a politician who is being investigated or tried um, for corruption by the EFCC makes his way to Asso Rock Villa to see the president to complain to him? I mean, what does this say? Um, that, that this has become the pattern of the politicians to go cry to the president, see, they're investigating me. Um, and, and, you know, what, what would you say the president, you know, makes, is he expected to say, oh, AFCC, hands off or what? Well, they are going for photo ops. 
And so once they see that they have access to the seat of power, they are trying to 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 use visual communication strategy. For example, if I appear before the president and I get access to Asuro, and then the next time you invite me to come, and then you see that the first time you invited me, uh, shortly after you released me, I was in Asuro to see the president, and I have photos of the president. Now, he sends signal to whoever is at the lowest level that, you know, this guy had access. We didn't even know what this guy went to call the president. So if this guy could accept the president, then what are we going to do? We yeah, have so. seen situation whereby people that have cases with with um, people that have cases with EFCC, you are rewarded with important appointment in national assembly, even principal officers. We have seen cases of people that have engaged in 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 violence against the sanctity of democracy, being 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 rewarded with 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 top positions in the national assembly. So you recall. That during I, I can't recall which Senate, whether it's the fifth or the or the sixth Senate, where one senator from from Niger State stood up in the floor of the Senate and said that majority of the people he's seen in the Senate with himself, there were people that he has arrested, he has he has their case filed as the police officer for fraud. And when he was the when he was the, the, the Senate had to quickly recede into an executive into an executive session. Go to the Federal Executive Council. How many members of the Federal Executive Council have cases with EFCC? How many members of the Senate have cases with EFCC? How many members of the House of Rep have cases with EFCC? So that's why people have lost interest in the fight against corruption, thinking that, well, um, corruption is um, it's, it's, not been, it's, not been, it's not been addressed the way it should be addressed because a lot of politicking has Hmm. I'm sure um, not a few Nigerians will be concerned about the caliber of persons who are um, uh, vying for the presidency that have, um, especially those that have corruption, corruption cases hanging over, over them. Uh, uh, let, let's stay with uh, the, the Southeast and the uh, press for an Igbo president in Nigeria come 2023, because still on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper, uh, this headline is there. Ohaneze inaugurates lobby panel, restates presidency's, Igbo presidency's benefits. I'm sure best benefits to Nigeria. Ohaneze inaugurates lobby panel, restates Igbo presidency's benefits. Well, before you respond to that, they have yesterday said that um, uh, the EFCC, EFCC should stop attacking uh, the Southeast you know, and uh, stop working against uh, an Igbo presidency. They're seeing some of these cases as an attack on the people of the Southeast. What, what do you say to that, Jilly Johnson? And they should, the organization should look at the administration of the Southeast states by the governors. They should not wait for EFC for a federal agent to come and look at it. And the state charity begins at home. And what have they been doing with respect to um, dealing with the issue of corruption? charges that have been leveled against governors of the Southeast state and governors across 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 Nigeria. I think that um, our NSD as, as, as a body is not doing what it's supposed to do in such light and ensuring that there's good governance in the Southeast and that people that are elected are, are providing delivery push of democracy for, for, for the people of the Southeast. And the South is usually a crisis of marginalization. But the question you ask is, what have we done with the resources and with the level of governance they have had at the local and at the state and at the state level? Taking that to the presidents, you will recall what has been the voice of our agency um, against the secession movement of, of the school. What have they done with respect to that? Because in one of the in one of the writers, Anizi said the Southeast has no, 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 no plans to exit out of Nigeria. That's coming too late for me. That's coming too late for me. What used to be the whole of Biafra tends to have part of the South South, with the exception of Delta and Edo State. But the bulk of what used to be Southeast, what Eastern region there, that South South and Southeast. Now, as the South, the core Southeast. Um, politician, how have they integrated their agenda with that of South South? Would the South South go with the South East? Their, their closest neighbor 
who used to be part and parcel of Biafra then, and we used to be part and parcel of South Eastern Nigeria then, the Eastern region then, would they go along with the Southeast? Now, the South, the, 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 the agenda shouldn't be limited to the five states of, 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 of the Southeast, or should be extended to acquire from Cross River, um, River State, Delta State, and those states, so that you have an holistic integration around that state. What used to be start, what used to be the Eastern region in 1960 to 66 has been drastically eroded with the creation of states in Nigeria. And they are not coming to terms with that. And then you have this this different types of group not speaking with one coherent, not speaking with coherent voice. What's what's the direction of the Southeast uh, 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 Southeast? politics what's the direction what's the agenda but but but, but do you then, do, do you feel that this this because you've asked the question what's the direction what's the agenda and a lot of people have also asked that question and um, what structures are they building you know how are they reaching out um do they even have a political structure and all that but now we're seeing that they have inaugurated a lobby panel um and of course lobbying lobby means panel. you have nah. to you have to reach out to to other people so isn't this a a good start now nah, let, let me put it across to you is ob Obi um, Okorocha um, David Dumai are they all on the same page? Oji Zakalu. Now uh, the south the southern part of Nigeria came together and said, you know what, we need to have our own local community police. So the southwest responded with Amoteko. Has the South has been able to come up with its own? You see, have, have they been able to... You see, you must understand the dynamics of power. And I've told my friend from the Southeast that it's unfortunate that the Southeast, by their nature, they are Republican. Well, you we must understand, they are Republican in nature, so everybody is on his own. However, in the corporate larger interest of Nigeria, you must understand the dynamics and come together to, to play the politics the way it should be played. You see, I, from my own understanding, this is my own opinion, I might be wrong. It is pretty difficult, based on the dynamics of Nigerian politics, as presently constituted for a Southeast person to be the president of Nigeria. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. It's just my own thesis. But understanding the dynamics, and the question I've thrown to my friends and my colleagues that are from the Southeast is that, what type of politics did you play that nine years Nine years after the end of the Civil War, the Southeast had the vice president in the Second Republic. The Southeast had the speaker of the House of Rep in the Second Republic. The Southeast, what used to be the Southeast then, had the Senate president in Joseph Wyas, Ebe Uzeoki, as the speaker, Alex Ekweme as the vice president. What type of politics did the Southeast play nine years after civil war that they were able to be integrated and to be rewarded with those positions that the only position the Southwest got was the national chairman of the ruling party. That was the most significant. Now, they need to go back to the drawing boards and understand the dynamics of politics. Well, I, I, it seems I'm being consulted for them. If they want to consult, they should come to my office. I will give it to them. Let me stop you. All right, I'm sure I'll, I'll be writing the invoice for you, so we can we can split the bill. Yeah. yeah. Um. We we have to go, but uh, interestingly, do not carry it in the papers today. Um. Yesterday evening, news coming out that after Namdi Kanu had through his uh, one of his lawyers, Ifan for transmitted information to his people that they should start talking peace, and they released a statement. IPOB through their um their publicity secretary. Ima powerful that they're ready to talk peace to the federal government if the federal government is ready to sincerely and honestly also uh, in a secure manner discuss peace with them in in one or two sen sentences um won't that also play well for the politics of the southeast ahead of 2023 exactly peace and unity peace and unity this country is stronger our strength is in our number our strength is in our diversity and once there is peace and unity, and there's equity, there's fairness in what we do. Uh, like I told you, use the 1979 case as a case. 
after nine years of civil war, the integration into national life. So once there is peace, and federal government um, should, 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 and when we talk about federal government, federal government is not the presidency. Federal government is national assembly, the judiciary. And also the state governments still have a role to play in this scheme of things. And right. I think if we do that, right. we'll have peace in the land. Right. Once there's peace in the land, there will be prosperity. Right. There can be peace if there's no unity. And if there's unity, there'll be peace. And if there's peace, there'll be prosperity. These right. three cardinal factors are what we need in Nigeria for us to grow and achieve our dreams. Thank you. Okay. Have so a wonderful in, 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 Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting analysis. Uh, but please, if you're consulted, Jilly Johnson, you can call me, you know, to be, you know, your secretary. Yeah. <laughs> I can write yeah, the invoice you, for you. Come, I yes. address that address of journalism. <laughs> I address an address of journalism because they should right. come. All right. We we'll give it to them. Thank All you right. very much. Jilly Johnson is the chief it's lecturer. A with it. Thank you. Share this with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Jilly Johnson is the chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, like you heard him say. We still have some more discussion ahead right here on the breakfast on plus tv africa today is world cancer day we speak with a cancer survivor and advocates as well on the importance of such a day stay with us